Let's build some hardware for our Zerpino example. I have a USB hub over here with two cables coming out of it. One is a standard USB cable with a mini D connector. The other is our FTDI cable with flying leads coming off the end of it. Start off with a solderless breadboard. Let me zoom in a bit on that. Put the Zula 2 board in there. And it's got a good snug fit. Connect the uh, connect the ground of the Zula 2 to a ground bus on the breadboard. We'll need that later. And connect the USB cable to the Zula 2. That's all we need to do right now for that. Now we'll program these FPGA with the Zupino bitstream. We'll start up GXS load. Drag the bitstream over into the flash EEPROM pane and this will load it into the serial configuration flash on the Zula 2 board. So whenever the Zula 2 board is powered on the Zupino will be loaded into the FPGA and it will act as a very small Arduino type board. Okay, the flash is configured. So now we can move on to the next phase. We'll disconnect the USB cable to take power away from everything. And then we'll hook up the FTDI cable. Connect the ground of the FTDI, that's the black lead. We'll connect that to the ground from the Zula 2 board. Then connect the orange lead, which is the URTX line, the transmit line. Connect that to channel number zero. That's the second pin from the bottom on this side. And we connect the UART receive line, the RX line. That's the yellow lead. We connect that to channel 1, which is adjacent to channel 0, obviously. So that connects our FTDI cable to the Zipuino. And I'm going to hook the USB cable back up. The only use that has now is to provide power to the Zula 2 board. All the communications and everything that happens through the Zupino IDE is going to occur through the FTDI cable. So now we can start up the Zupino IDE. Go into the top level directory that we extracted from the archive we downloaded from the Zupino site and double click on zupino.exe and that brings up the IDE. First thing we want to do is set up the board that we'll be using. In this case we'll be using a Zupino 2.0 and let me move that over a little bit so you can see. Zupino 2.0 and then Zupino 2.0 on Zula 2 LX9 and we need to set up the port that would be communicating over. In this case the FTDI cable is port COM6 so we select that. Now we should be able to communicate with the board. So let's load the blinker example and, and that's one of the basic examples and there it is right there blink go ahead and load that that brings up another instance of the IDE with the blinker code in it and the blinker code sets the LED as being on pin 13 and 13 will be mapped to channel 13 on the Zula 2 board and there's a setup routine that just turns that LED pin into an output type pin so it can drive the LED. And then when you have the main loop, 
all it does is it writes a high to the LED which turns the LED on waits for a thousand milliseconds or one second then writes a low to the LED turns it off then waits another second and then repeats that forever so the LED should blink on and off in a two second cycle now all it takes to download that the ID calls it upload is click on this arrow and that will compile the program and upload it to the Zupino that's on the FPGA and it says down here programming completed successfully so at this point the Zupino on the F in the FPGA should be executing that program but we can't see it because we don't have an LED attached to that pin so let's go ahead and do that find pin number 13 and that's right up here and we'll bring that down here attach a resistor from that over to here and then attach the anode of an LED to the end of that resistor and then attach the cathode to ground and at this point you can see that the LED is blinking on and off in about a two second cycle just like the program was designed to do so can we change the speed of that blinking all we have to do is change the parameters inside the delay loops let's change that to 300 and 300 so now it should be blinking about three tenths of a second on three tenths of a second off go ahead and recompile and upload it to the board like that now you can see that the flash rate has gone up markedly from what it was before so we have successfully reprogrammed the Zupino on the FPGA board and that's pretty much how simple it really is